So welcome back to Kurno EXP and welcome to the Great Flat Load Trail Cornish mining site and as you can see it's quite a vast area folks So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at uh, Bassett Engine House Mine and all the remaining buildings so let's go folks so it's right here we are going to get some aerial um, perspective in a bit but uh, I thought what we do first is explain what we've got in front of us what it did and what its purpose was for so as you may know we've got quite a few locations on the back burner at the moment so we will be back out again later this week with the crew we've got something special coming up soon as well we've got another paranormal investigation so we've got the correct um, protection spell um, from our friends um, Donna and her crew so thank you Donna for that really appreciate it and later on end of the month we've got another paranormal investigation happening with some well-known youtubers so that'll be good folks so uh so yeah now that we've got this sorted what i mean is the um protection spell i don't mind doing it folks it's just that like i said before i did feel that something was following us around so uh we're gonna make sure that we're okay on that and right now i feel that we're we're on it so anyway back to today's video so we'll start at Bassett Mine in the dry house folks now you probably won't guess what a dry house is there it is right there by the way I don't know if you can see it because of the light it's where the men when they finish their shift underground would have come up to surface and got showered and put on their clean clothes which they started the day with because obviously mining is a very dirty game because we've done a a little bit of uh, amateur mining ourselves and of course we've been underground quite a few times so we know what it's all like folks because that time that uh, we, me and the crew went down to this particular mine we got covered in it and uh, yeah it's bloody awkward stuff to get off your clothes so uh, that's why they had a dry house so we're just heading towards the dry house this is other parts of the building here which we'll we'll get to in a minute but uh, Let's just have a quick look at the dry. So they fence that off now. I don't know why that is. Probably because it's become unstable or what have you. But uh, there's the shaft right there, as you can see. So here we are. This is the dry, folks. So now this mine, as you can probably tell, is quite ornate because it was owned and run by Lord Bassett de Dunstanville. Now. As we've said before about him, he was a very wealthy chap. He owned Tahiti Country Estate, which now is a country park. And uh, he owned most of the mineral rights in and around Campbell and Paul Redruth. Now, as I've said before, he created a hospital in Redruth for the miners. So here we are, folks. This is the dry. So, we've got some lovely remains in the ground. So, over at Levant, which is down at West Cornwall, they have a dry, which is on the same scale as this, but they've actually got a sunken bath actually in the ground, which is uh, quite magical, isn't it, folks? So, here we are. We do have uh, some pictures of where we are. This is South Wheel Francis and the shaft of that is just there and uh, we've got uh, some more information here now here we go folks here we are this gives us a lot more in look to what we're actually dealing with here today so this is um the engine house which we're going to have a look at in a minute it's still there that's the shaft which we just went past a minute ago so that's the back side of it that's looking like back this way is going towards Red Roof and Camborne and Paul. This is our side of the engine house. Now, it's unusual because this engine house is not conventional, folks. What I mean is it's um, the bob, rather than being on the bob wall so it rocks in and out, the bob is totally enclosed inside the engine house and it's on a different level and it's on a different setup 
to the um, usual. So here's a picture of, I think that's the controls to the winder. Now here's a picture here, actually inside, I don't know if you can see that very clear now, inside this inside this um, engine house, as you can see, look, it's totally different to the conventional design and type. Here's another, here we go, look, this, this really explains of what we're actually talking about here. So traditionally, folks, traditional engine house, the bob would be here, and it would rock up and down on the bob wall, which would be the thickest part of the, of the engine house, by the way. But this one, as you can see, look, it's totally, totally different. So the engine would rock this part up and down, which then would rock, this is the pump rod here, folks. So this is a totally foreign, I don't know if you can see that now. It's a totally foreign way of doing it, but it worked. Apparently they said that the, the beam or the bob actually broke and they had to go and get another one cast over, I think it was the Netherlands or somewhere like that. So there's, there's the conventional type, as you can see that, that would be the bob wall. And there's the, the bob there. They call it the bob because it bobs up and down. Right, so I don't know if I've um, wiped your memories at all with that information, but uh, it's all interesting stuff in it, folks. This is inside the um, engine house right here. So it would have been very, the guys that would have been in charge would have been very proud of that and they would have kept all the brass polished up and everything. Anyway, back to the, this is where they would have got washed and changed. And there would have been a series, uh, the, this room here, this concrete plinth that we're on was probably where they washed themselves. And then they would have stepped into the other part of the room and uh, they would have got their, their clothes on and got changed and everything. So yeah, so it would have been a hive of activity. And it's said that this building here, because of its human um, connections, is very paranormally active. So it's quite a spooky place, folks. So you've got another part there that might have been a a bath house room whatever don't really know folks but they would have had lovely sash windows on here and uh, it would have been very nice indeed right so let's uh let's go over to the engine house and then we've just seen the pictures of that haven't we another thing to note if you come here look at look at this folks look at this now you see this cable that is actually cable from here and this is what they would have been raised and lowered up in the shaft with. This is the original winding cable from the winding drum, which would have been in that building there. Let's go in that building now first, shall we? Well, we won't go in it, we'll just go outside it, but I'll explain about it, folks. So there's quite a lot to take in on this bloody video, so it might be a bit long-winded, but the drone flight will come after this uh, description of what we've actually got here because it's a pretty complete mine site to be honest right so this building here was the winder now the winder what it did there was a massive drum inside there and it was powered by a horizontal steam winder and uh that would have been operational all through the day. So you see this great big gap we've got here, that's where the massive winding drum would have been and the cable would have came up through and out through the roof. Now, if we look carefully, folks, you can actually see there's like a tar stain there. Now that tar stain is actually come off the rope as in when it was winding up and down in the shaft. So that's a nice little bit of history that is. It's, it's nice to see that. So as we can see, this would have had a lovely massive sash window on there, lovely panes of glass. Would have been kept really clean because the guy, or the winder inside, would have actually had to have seen the, the head frame, which would have been just over here, and it stood really high, and the wheels on the top, the capstan wheels, right up the top there, folks. So we've already seen the pictures of that, which is quite interesting. But uh, it's just nice to be able to see a bit of archaeology, i.e. That grease stain from the the actual rope amazing eh folks right so let's go and have a look so what we do now obviously this was steam high pressure steam which was developed here in Cornwall by Richard Trevivik and uh, the steam for this would have been produced in the boiler house which was just over here we've got two ladies looking at us folks <laughs> hello you're <all> right <laughs> 
it's going to be on YouTube later. So if you want to watch it, it's Kerno EXP. That's my channel. So my my channel is Kerno EXP. It's a little green little sticker, and the video should be up tonight. But I'm not going to put you on it because I don't want to embarrass you. All right. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you very much. Right, folks. So this is the boiler house here. There was five Lancashire boilers in here and they were two fire tubes going through right at the end and they would have been on 24 hours because the engine, the steam pumping engine, would have had to pump the mine 24 hours a day to keep the mine dry. Now, as you could imagine, in Cornwall, the water table is fairly high. So this is why these boilers, or the crew that were here, were here 24 hours a day, constantly shoving Welsh steam coal on, folks. Now, Welsh steam coal is quite special because it burns really hot. Now, we imported it from South Wales to a place on the north coast called Portreef, and Portreef had a standard connection railway line to Carnbray Yard, and that's where the coal was um, conjugated, shall we say, and then it would have been brought up to here uh, back in the early days in horse and cart, and then later on um, uh, uh, trucks, um, combustion engine trucks, and so on and so forth. So you can imagine the guys that worked here, they would have been black, covered in coal dust. And it's not just that, folks. Also, when the coal is burnt down into the bottom, they would have had to rake it out, and all the ash would have came out. And on certain times, when, they, when the council have done uh, bits around here, you can actually find pieces of clinker, which is still around. Right, so now we'll make our way into the engine house. Let's go, folks. So this is the shaft right here, and it goes down quite a way, folks, quite a way. So what we'll do now is we'll make our way to the back of the engine house. Now, when this was working site, you would not have been allowed to go into the engine house because the guy that was in charge of pumping that would have had to have listened to the bells and the bells would signify to, to increase the engine, to decrease the engine, to keep the keep it just ticking over slowly sort of thing like, you know. So this is the engine house. As you can see, sorry about the wind noise, folks. But uh, we've got the shaft right there, so I think what we'll do is we'll go straight to the shaft and have a little peer down just to have a little look. So hopefully you can hear me nice and clearly because of the wind noise. Sorry about that, folks. Right, here we go. Now, here we are. Can we actually get the camera through? Not properly. Uh. <laughs> right. There you are, folks. Look at that. Magic, eh? Now, another thing to note about this particular shaft, which is quite rare in Cornwall, is you'll see the walls of it. It's actually brick-lined, and that is unique. This is unique, folks, for down here, because usually we just uh, chiseled through the solid rock and just uh, made the best of it. But because this mine was financed by Lord Bassett de Dunstanville, this is why this is brick-lined. As you can see, you can see pretty much all the way down to the bottom there. I'm not going to put the camera too far in, folks. I don't want to lose the camera because it wasn't exactly cheap. Nothing is these days, is it? So, yeah, so there we are. So, um, there is a couple of groups that have been down, down there, not through this entrance. There is other ways, but I'm not going to say how, where, who, who, what and when sort of thing. But, you know, it's quite an interesting thing, isn't it, folks? Right, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's just... Uh, Get the camera through. Ugh. Right, there we go. We've got it. So there would have been two floors in here. This, the bob or the great beam would have been at this level, and the actual engine would have been above us, folks. Right above us. That's good stuff, hey. Right. So I think what we'll do now is we'll go and find somewhere to set the drone up, and we'll go and fly the drone above all of this, so it gives you a better perspective of what we actually got. Okay. Right, folks, see you in a bit. Cheers and gone.
Right, so, furthering on folks, this is uh, something to do about the processing side of the mine. So I hope you enjoyed the drone flight. We met two lovely ladies that uh, interacted with us today. So we gave them a sticker each. So I uh, hope they enjoy the video later on. So yeah, this is part of the uh, processing side of it, folks. I think we can actually go inside. And uh, that there is 100% part of the um, processing side of it. So when you think about it, this is quite a complete mine site because everything is here, i.e. you've got um, the steam winding engine over the other side. You've got this engine over here, which is for pumping water. You've got this one, which is, um, I, I think this is to do with the um, generation of power but um, correct me if I'm wrong there folks, I don't know everything. But uh, then you've got the dry, and then you've got the processing side of it. So uh, quite a, ah, this is the compressor house folks. So there we are. So I was on the right wavelength, but not quite on it, was I? <laughs> right, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and we will definitely be back out in the week folks. Uh, me and my son are going somewhere tomorrow, so I should be able to do a bit of filming there uh, from a well-known place. I'm not going to say too much about that, but uh, anyway, we're out again later in the week. And until then, cheers and go on.